How to Heal the Sick, Hour 14. And I believe that Jesus Christ is coming soon. How many of you believe that Jesus Christ is coming soon? Okay. There is no doubt in my mind. The entire body of Christ is just, uh, they're just like a racehorse ready to come out of the gate because they feel that the return of Jesus is imminent. And yet, there's something that's in the body of Christ that God is going to take out of every single one of us. I want everybody in here. You may not even know me. You may not ever have ever heard this before, but I do want you to say this right now. I want you to say, I love Francis Hunter. I love Francis Hunter. Say, I'm going to keep on loving her. I'm going to keep on loving her. Even if she insults me. Even if she insults me. At the beginning of the service. At the beginning of the service. Because I'm about to insult you. Just a little tiny bit. Is that okay? You don't mind if I step on your toes a little bit, do you? Jesus is coming back for a bride without a single spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. He is not coming back with a steam iron to press out your wrinkles. He's not coming back, as I said last night, with a shout and a can of shout to spray on your clothes and get the dirt out of your, your clothes. There is no cleansing power from between here in heaven. There are no ashtrays in heaven because I talked to God and he told me that today. That there's not a single solitary ashtray in heaven. And there are a lot of these junky little habits that we need to get rid of before the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I want to show you what I mean when I say there is sin in the body of Christ. And Jesus is calling for a bride without a single spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Now, without even mentioning any number of little things that I could mention, well, maybe I'll mention a couple of mics smoking and drinking and gossiping and criticizing and complaining. How many of you know that those aren't big sins? How many of you know there's no difference in sin? In God's eyes, sin is sin, whether it's murder or rape or homosexuality or incest, whatever it is, sin is sin. Now, I, want, I know normally at a time like this, everybody says, every head bowed and every eye closed and nobody peeking and everybody peeks. Did you know that? Do you know everybody peeks? And do you know how Pastor Strader knows that? Because he peeks and that's how he sees out there. Amen? You see, because I peek too. And you see, that's why I know. So I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you to leave your eyes open. And I want you to look around because I want you to see the condition of the body of Christ today. And I want you to be honest because you're in church, okay? I want to see the hand of every person in here who knows that they have something in their life that's not pleasing to God. Raise your hand right now in the name of Jesus and turn around, turn around and look at everybody that's in this audience. Turn around and look at everybody in this. So put your hands down. Oh, glory to God. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Who wants to go to hell? Nobody. <laughs> I didn't think you wanted to. <laughs> do, do I have any takers on that? How many of you want to go to heaven? All right. Then let's get rid of the sin in our life. Let's make a decision with our intellect and with our will that we're going to get rid of these things that are not pleasing to God. Every person in this auditorium, I want you to repeat this after me. No exceptions whatsoever. Everybody repeat this prayer after me. Say, Father, Father I want to go to heaven when I die. I want to go to heaven when I die. I sure don't want to go to hell. I sure don't want to go to hell. But Father, but Father, I have sin in my life. I have sin in my life. Maybe I think it's just a bad habit. Maybe I think it's just a bad habit. But you call it sin. But you call it sin. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to wash me. I ask you to wash me. In the precious blood of Jesus. In the precious blood of Jesus. And now, Lord Jesus. Now, Lord Jesus. I open the door to my heart. I open the door to my heart. And I invite you to come in. And I invite you to come in. Take my whole life. Take my whole life. Life. And make me the kind of person. And make me the kind of person that you want me to be. That you want me to be. 
And now, Father. And now, Father. I thank you. I thank you. Because my sins are forgiven. Because my sins are forgiven. And Jesus. And Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. Because you're in my heart. Because you're in my heart. Now, Father. Now, Father. Your word says. Your word says. With the heart. With the heart. Man believeth unto righteousness. Man believeth unto righteousness. But with the mouth. But with the mouth. Confession is made. Confession is unto made. Unto salvation. Unto salvation. So with my big, big mouth. So with my big, big mouth. I now confess. I now confess. At the top of my lungs. At the top of my lungs. I'm saved. I'm saved. Turn around. Tell your neighbors. Say, I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Now. You remember that scripture that I read where Jesus said every believer will speak with new tongues. I'm going to ask you if you'll do me a favor. I would like to see the hand of every person in here who either does not speak in tongues or who does not have fluency in your prayer language because the power never comes until you have a real fluent language. And you don't want to go without the power of God in your life. I want to see the hand of every person in here who either Thank does you, not Jesus. speak in tongues or who does not have fluency. Would you be kind enough to stand to your feet right where you are? Those of you that raised your hand, will you stand to your feet right where you are? All over this auditorium, just stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Glory to God. Now, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to ask you to do this. Those of you that are standing, would you get out of your seats real quickly and come up here to the front? Those of you that are standing, I'm going to ask you to just come up here real quickly because you'll enjoy the service much more if you've got the baptism with the Holy Ghost. Those of you who are seated, I want you to clap them in as they come. I want you to clap them in as they come because this is Pentecost. This is Pentecost. You see, this is what God is doing in the world today. This is revival. When you see this many people come for the baptism with the Holy Ghost, I can guarantee you that revival has hit the state of Florida. Glory to God. Just keep clapping them in. And let's just say thank you, Jesus. Isn't this exciting? You see, this is what the Spirit of God is doing all over the place. This is what God's Spirit is doing all over the place. Look at them just streaming down from the balcony. Look at them coming down the aisles. Glory to God. Just keep stretching them out on that side. Father, I give you the praise. I give you the glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Catch, get up as close as you can. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Is this fantastic? Oh, praise the Lord. Glory to God. You, Father, we just give it. You know what we're going to have to do, Charles? We're going to have to leave the rest of them standing in the aisles. Isn't this exciting when you can see this aisle all the way down to the exit sign filled with people that can't even get up to the front? Look at that line all the way down there. Can't even get up here. Beloved, this is what God is doing today as God is pouring out of his spirit you, upon all flesh. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, I wonder if I could ask you tall ones, just step up here on stage so I can see the people. Uh, you, you, you. There's about six tall people right up here. Could you move up just a little bit? You, 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 and you, and you. Either step back down or step over this way. Just a little bit. I want to be able to see all the people. No, you're still in my way. Move back. Some of you ushers help us just a little bit. Just the tall ones. The rest of you stay there. Yeah, praise the Lord. Okay, now. You are about to receive something that 100% of those disciples that were there on the day of Pentecost received. The endowment of power by which you could perform the works of Jesus Christ here on earth today. God was just, uh, he gave me a message a while ago uh, that all of you, how many of you believe that Jesus was raised from the dead 2,000 years ago? But what God showed me in this beautiful audience tonight uh, that all of you have been raised from the dead. In your spirit, you've been born again. 
Francis led you in a prayer. When you prayed that prayer, if you weren't born again before, you may not know it, but the Spirit of Jesus Christ came in and merged with your spirit, and literally, Jesus Christ, the Spirit of Jesus Christ is in you now. That's an awesome thing to realize that you're where Jesus lives. Now, when Jesus sent the Holy Spirit back on the day of Pentecost, the Spirit of God came in and filled up all of those disciples. They were all ordinary people. How many of you are ordinary people? That's the kind of receive that day. Just normal people like us. But they all begin to speak in a supernatural language, a language of the Spirit. Every one of them, not one exception. And there won't be one exception here tonight that speaks in tongues, and all those people out there already do. But in case there's two or three that don't, you just act like an old line Pentecostal and speak in tongues when we get ready to in a minute, and they'll never know the difference, but you'll be talking to God. It's an awesome thing when you're filled up with God. That's why Jesus so lovingly, in the 17th chapter of Mark, looked up to his Father before he left the earth, and he said, Father, as I am in you, and you are in me, let both of us go make our home in them. How would you like to have be the home of God in Jesus both? I mean, that's quite a castle, isn't it? Well, you are the temple of God. Now, each one of you are going to be endued with the power of God, like on a day of Pentecost, in which time they all spoke with other tongues. And then Jesus confirmed that by saying, just before he left earth, every believer will speak with new tongues. That is not just a command, it's, it's an actual prophecy. It's Jesus telling in advance that every one of you up here are going to speak in tongues tonight. Now, you need to listen to some little basic instructions. All languages are made up of a bunch of mixed up little bitty syllable sounds, made up of a bunch of funny little different sounds, every language. Yesu rakasta sinema. Anybody in here know what I said? That's in Finnish, and it says, Jesus is Lord. Is that Jesus, and I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Francis and I learned those three words. That's all the Finnish we know, but they were made up of little syllable sounds. When we went shopping, we caught a taxi, and the taxi driver would say, Do you speak Finnish? And all we would say is, Yes, Rakasta Sinua. And so in department stores, wherever we went, uh, we just let them know that Jesus was alive. Now, those are made up of little syllable sounds. On the day of Pentecost, when they spoke these different languages there, as the Spirit gave the utterance, they were making these different sounds. Now, that's what's going to happen to you. When Francis and I received, we didn't know how. We were already evangelists. Uh, we were loving Jesus with all of our heart. We had been born again. But when we received, a man told us this, these simple instructions. He said, if you will sincerely ask Jesus to baptize you with the Holy Spirit, just like you ask him sincerely to save you, then Jesus will baptize you and you will speak with other tongues. Jesus said, you will speak with other tongues. And so what Francis and I did, this man said, if you'll begin to love God and praise God, but not in a language you know, because you don't speak with your understanding. Paul said, I pray with my understanding and I pray with my spirit. He said, don't think when you start giving these sounds, but let a burst of sounds come up, praising God and loving God with mixed up syllable sounds, different sounds made with the letters of the alphabet, but let them come out loudly enough you can easily hear yourself. Let them come out in plain open syllables, different syllables, but love God. Most of all, he said, let it go in long flowing sentences so you won't just give two or three syllables and stop. Francis did that in our bedroom at home the next morning after we listened to this, uh, this bit of instructions, and then she called me. I'm a certified public accountant. I was working in a skyscraper in downtown Houston on a millionaire's tax return that day, and Francis called, and she prayed in tongues, and I thought it was the most beautiful thing in the world, but more than that, I knew that now my beloved was endued with the power that was missing in our lives. We had laid hands on more than 10,000 people who came to us believing that they would get healed. Shh, shh, shh. They came believing that they would get healed, but they didn't because we were powerless. A few did, just a straggling few, and God must have just suddenly felt sorry for us and healed them anyway. 
But then I knew now she had that power, and I knew that Jesus told me to have that power if I was going to do his work. And so Frances stopped praying in tongues over the telephone, and she prayed in English and said, Jesus, I ask you to baptize Charles with the Holy Spirit in the car, on the freeway, on the way home from work tonight. She's always making it hard on God. Hallelujah. But it's so simple, and I knew if I do my human part, God would do his. So at the end of the day, I was coming up on the freeway, 60 miles speed limit, heavy, 5 o'clock traffic. I was working my way into my traffic lane, and I want to show you what I, Charles, a normal human being, did when I was endued to the power and spoke in tongues. I took a deep breath, and I said something like this. Ah, te mi keshe no lavora baha shekila baha nehe ne maha pafaranako o shi he leviria ta o rana la maka poti ke leviria te e shekivirima rana la mahoroko balaba e shekava o raha mala nike vo shelavata and I spoke in other tongues as the spirit gave me others and I knew at that moment that my spirit was filled with the spirit of God and I was endued with the power to be equipped to do the works of Jesus here on earth today in this last generation. I was excited, and you'll be excited in just a minute when that happens to you. Now, one day I was ministering to about 150 people at PTL Club, and just be sensitive to God. He does some of the most exciting things, and you'll really not know it, but out of all of these people, some way I looked down to, uh, I looked down to one young lady in the midst of all of these people, and I thought God just wanted me to speak in tongues again to illustrate it. So I looked at this one young lady, and I said something like, Arahashiki mi la Hamala. And I thought, well, I spoke in tongues again. But when I finished and they all spoke in tongues, this young lady came running to me and she said, Charles, I'm a Jew. She said, it took me years to believe that Jesus is a Messiah and get all the doubt about that out, but he's my Savior. I've been born again. But she said, when you were saying, make these funny little sounds, just begin to love God and don't think about it. She said, that didn't make sense. It didn't seem possible. And I was just being filled with doubt. And I thought, well, I can't receive. But she said, out of all of those people, you look straight at me and in a perfect Hebrew language, and I don't know a word of Hebrew, I said, relax and it'll come easily. And that Jew's hands went up and she spoke in tongues. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, some of you do not have a fluent language. How many here in this group do not have a fluent language? Now, let me illustrate why you don't. I want everybody in the beautiful auditorium to say good and loud, Jesus, I love you with all of my heart. Jesus, Now, everybody say it this way, Jesus, I. Why did you quit making those funny little syllable sounds? You cannot speak with making it without making sounds, and so you stopped speaking when the Spirit was giving you the language. You cannot speak in a language without speaking in the language, but you don't think about it. And so uh, what happened, you thought, well, I'll try to think of the next syllable sound. You don't think when you're praying in tongues. That's with your understanding. You pray with your spirit and it comes out like rivers of living water. Now what we're going to do, we're going to pray a prayer in English asking Jesus to baptize us with the Holy Spirit. At the end of this prayer, I'm going to count to three and say now. And as soon as I give that signal, I want everybody in the auditorium, good, strong voice, no screaming, no yelling, no waving of hands because you'll disturb people around you. Just sincerely, I want you to look up and begin to love God, but not in any language you know. Let these sounds come out. Lick split. That means as fast as you can turn them loose. So it'll bypass your thinking initially and then at any time you want to you can pray in tongues at any speed you want to. Okay? Everybody in English first say, Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus. Thank you for the most exciting gift on earth. Thank you for the most exciting gift on earth. The gift of salvation. Gift of salvation. Jesus, you promised another gift. Jesus, you promised another gift. The gift of the Holy Spirit. So I ask you, Lord Jesus, to baptize me with the Holy Spirit right now, exactly like on the day of Pentecost. Thank you, Jesus. You've done your part. Now I'm going to do my part. I'm going to lift my hands up to God. I'm going to look up to God. And when Charles says, now... I'm going to begin to praise God, but not in any language I know, because I can't speak two languages at one time. 
Father, I love you. I worship you. I praise you. I love you with all of my heart. Now, everybody in the auditorium, get ready to love him, but no more language, you know. Everybody on the first syllable, you must make the sound. Let them come out quickly. Ready? One, two, three. Now. Abatika poria shenda la valiata. Oranda la varavata. Make the sound. Karobo shi livida mata. Randa la vata. Orra kabasya. Livida makoria te. Ishena la la mato. Randa la va. Ishe tapopo shi la. Oraha maka leva no kopo. Is your no rabata run the lavala hamata? Love God, love God. You're speaking directly to God with your very spirit. Oroja vinima katora mahanehela ashavaka karabawa mahashi yashe ke lama mata. Love God, love Him. Open your mouth, let those syllables of praise go up to God. Koroba shani. I see two or three with your mouth closed. Trust God, let God. You're not opening your mouth, brother. Let God have the voice. Karaboshe ne la vida matara e shanne la matato korra bala arashe shime la mata e shanne i karro no matara baha shanne la variata. And they all began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. But let me tell you something. The devil doesn't like what you just did. He knows that you just received the endowment of power by which you bind him and rob his kingdom of demon spirits, but he doesn't want you to believe that you receive that power. What did the devil do to Jesus right after he received the endowment of power? He met him out on a desert and he said, if you're the son of God, he tried to put doubt in the mind of Jesus, and he tries to put doubt in every one of our minds when we receive this endowment and we speak in tongues. Now, the way he does it, he doesn't necessarily point at us like he did to Jesus, but he put little thoughts in the mind and goes something like this. That didn't sound like I thought tongues would sound. And I could tell it was me speaking. Well, it was the disciples, I mean the people on the day of Pentecost, the disciples. And then he'll say, didn't come out of me very fast. And I had to think of those sounds, and it finally comes up with his biggest lie, and he'll say something like this. I don't feel any differently. I don't feel any power. Who said you would? Jesus just said you're going to receive power, and you have. Now, the way to get rid of the doubts of the devil is to speak in tongues. He can't stand tongues because he can't understand them. That's your hotline up to God. So this time, we're going to go just for a few seconds, twice as loud, twice as fast, twice as many syllables, but twice as much love to God. The devil's going to scoop down over this auditorium, go out through the nearest exit sign with all your doubts. Lift your hands up. Let's give a God, a good short praise. Ready? Corra baha shamne la bala mati. Ira shenike na mama la bata. Doro kere diya la hamaka. E jarna la ma ke te bolia te. Corro na la bata. Miki me la bata. Ora se vora na la mariata. See? You can speak in tongues anytime you want to. Now, but just so you don't think you have to be a loud mouth Pentecostal all your life, this time we're going to see how softly above a whisper we can pray in tongues, but with a purpose. Jesus said, after the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and he just did, you'll receive power, and you just did. Then he said, you'll be my witness. A witness is somebody who gets someone else on the way to heaven. So I want you to select one person that you know who does not know Jesus as Savior. Symbolically hold them up before God in your hand like this. And then I want you just above a whisper, but very, very sincerely, Pray for this soul in your new heavenly language. Ready? Avahashi niki pa no kora eshike la jomo momoto ukote kibili biliate irasho ukola ma niki va ara keshike la mohorna. Thank you, Jesus, for saving every one of the livora meshi ni namaka kora va kashashi la va. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't that beautiful? You see how natural it is to pray in tongues? I only had you do it fast at first so you'd get used to it. Now, after this, you don't have to pray loud. You can if you want to. Now, Paul said, 
I pray with my understanding and I pray with my spirit. You've done both. He said, I sing with my understanding and I sing with my spirit. So what I want all of us to do in this auditorium is to join in as one single choir, totally in unity with one another in our spirits and in the spirit language that you just received and all out in the auditorium, I want you to look up to God and just sing a love song. Let your voices harmonize. But I'm going to ask you to do one other thing. Most people upon earth today have never looked God in the eyes with their eyes open and smiled at him when they talked to him. They looked down at the devil, closed their eyes, and put on a frown. And that's not the way Jesus, Jesus always looked up to God when he spoke to him. So I want you to look up to God, smile at him, and sing a love song like it's a joy song you're going to sing to God. Okay, lift your hands up. Hallelujah, we love you, we praise you, our Father. Blessed be your holy name, your marvelous name. Oh, how honorable God we praise Praise you, hallelujah. Corra malava hashe nella la matica va, corra se la, corra nella mala maria roba hashe la va, arra se nella mala matica va, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Now, Paul said, I wish you all prayed in tongues as much as I do. Every day, pray many times in tongues. Pray short prayers, long prayers, but every day, in your spirit, talk to God. 1 Corinthians 14, 2 says, you're, when you pray with your spirit, you're talking to God. Romans 8, 26, you're praying in the perfect will of God. Pray often in tongues as well as pray in English. Now, sing in tongues a lot. My only counsel is, please, when you're driving down a freeway, singing in tongues, don't close your eyes. It's not smart, okay? Be natural when you pray in tongues. The more natural you are, the more supernatural that will happen. And that's one of the greatest miracles that you just received. Now, read your Bible like you've never read the Bible before because the Spirit of God in you now is the Spirit of truth. If you'll read your Bible 30 minutes, two hours a day saying, God, show me things in your word by your Spirit that I can do to bless you with my life, not what you can do to bless me. God will rewrite that Bible for you and it'll come alive to you. Now, you have the power to cast out devils, to heal the sick, to do the same thing Jesus did, to even do greater things, to even do greater things than that. And I'm very quickly going to illustrate that to you by doing a miracle, but I'm going to let one of you that just spoke in tongues do the miracle. Is that all right? I want the people and you to know that immediately when the Holy Spirit fills you, when you speak in tongues, you've got power to do a supernatural miracle. Speaking in tongues is supernatural. You couldn't do that without the Spirit of God. He gives the utterance. But you give the voice. Now, how many of you in this auditorium have always wished you could heal the sick? Wave your hand at Jesus. See, that's the nature of God in you. If you had the nature of the devil, you'd want to lay hands on a well and make them sick. And that's not nice, okay? Now, I'm going to operate in one of the nine gifts because when God lives in you, how many of you believe God can operate in any or all of these nine gifts inside of you? Sure he can. And as you need those to do his work, God will open up these gifts to you. And I'm going to operate in one called the gift of word of knowledge. I'm going to ask God to pick out one of you, and I'm going to ask him to do it up here close. Isn't that nice? You can specify to God what you need. Somebody up in this front area that can get up real quick. I'm going to ask God to pick you out, something that we can tell when it's healed, and I'm going to let one of you heal that person by the power of God. No, no, God's going to pick it out. We'll get to you later. Don't worry. You'll get healed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody has got in the shoulder. It's more in back of the top of the shoulder. Uh, but there's a hurting pain. It could be arthritis or it could be something else. In the shoulder. Okay. Okay. Let me see just a minute. What's the problem with it? Arthritis. Okay. Come up here now. Okay. Just come on up. Now, now who up in this front end will minister healing? Okay, uh, I saw this lady first. Come on up. Hallelujah. Okay, now. Now, we've been talking a little bit about Jesus said every believer would cast out devils, speak in tongues. You speak in tongues, don't you? Let me hear you. You just received tonight, didn't you? What are you, a Southern Baptist? Pentecostal. Pentecostal receiving a Baptist. I, you know, for years I thought all Pentecostals spoke in tongues. Well, they really did, but some of them went to Pentecostal churches and they hadn't received. Hallelujah. Okay, now. now come over here just a little further. Now, that's good. Now, now, what I want you to do, both eyes open, both of you. No, no, would you go back down, please? 
Uh, ushers, just take her back down. We'll minister to all of you before the night's over, believe me. So don't come up unless we ask you during the service, okay? Now, this is casting out devils because arthritis is a disease that's brought on by an attack of the devil. You don't have the devil, uh, but he has a claw on this, this shoulder over here, and if you moved it up, it would hurt. Really? It really hurts that. Okay, goody. Now, now, you hold your hand about an inch above her shoulder. i leave your eyes open, both of you. Now, I want you to say and mean it. Devil, I bind you by the power of the Spirit of God, by which I was just now filled. Now, you devil of arthritis, you spirit of pain, come out. In Jesus, In Je now throw your arm up like that. Just don't really give it a swing it. Throw a baseball. Hallelujah. What happened? It's gone. It's gone. Give Jesus a favor. Go back to your seat. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. In 1972, Jesus burned some words into our heart, and I want to burn them into your heart today. The 16th chapter of Mark came alive in a very special way after we received the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Jesus said to every believer that every believer without exception would go and preach the gospel to every creature. And then he made a fabulous promise when he said, signs and wonders will also follow every believer, not just the disciples, but every believer. Sign number one, he said they'd cast out devils. Sign number two, he said they would speak with new tongues, the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And then he said they'd be able to handle the old devil and all of his poisons successfully. But the last 11 words that Jesus ever said are the ones that just really turned me on. He said, those who believe shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. You know, we started a little Bible study in our home somewhere toward the end of 1971. We had six people, and before long it grew to be 123. And I don't know about your house, but that was too many for mine. So we decided to move it to a hotel. And so we went to the hotel, which held about 400 people, and in three months our little home Bible study outgrew the hotel. So we had to move to a high school. And we were anticipating about a thousand people at our first meeting at the high school. And Charles and I panicked. We absolutely panicked. We hadn't received the baptism too long before that. And we began to think, how can we ever minister to that many people? So we decided that what we needed to do was to train our board of directors so that they would know how to minister healing the same as we did. And so we taught our board of directors how to minister healing to the sick and to the hurting. And I'll never forget the night at that high school auditorium because seven of us stepped off the stage together. And when we got down to about the third step, God spoke. And God said, the day will come when you will stand in the Astrodome with 120 healing teams ministering healing to the body of Christ. Wow, that was beyond anything that we could ever imagine because the Astrodome holds 69,000 people and we certainly weren't used to crowds like that. But you know, when God says it, it will come to pass. Now, one of the things it takes is faithfulness to God. Another thing it takes is persistence. You just keep hanging in there and remembering what God said and it will come to pass. Well, now, God never spoke to us on this particular story, uh, on this particular phase of our ministry, until about 12 years after he spoke. And then God said, the first step toward the Astrodome will be in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, on July the 4th, 1985. Charles and I just literally exploded on the inside because for 12 years we had been going around doing all the things that God told us to do and of course waiting for the time when he would release us to have heating explosions, which is what we call the thing that happens when you get on a floor and you minister with a lot of other healing teams. Now, the concept is not original. It came from Jesus because he said, that every believer would go out and lay hands on the sick. 
Well, you know, not everybody catches a vision, but we pray that you catch the vision of what we're telling you, because this, we believe, is the end time message, the last great message that will ever come out before Jesus comes back again. And yet it was the last message that he gave when he left this earth. When we prepared for Pittsburgh, we were so excited and we sent out notices all over the United States wondering, would there be 240 people? Now, if a team has to, a team has to have two, so 120 times two would make it 240. Would there be 240 people in the United States who would catch the vision of what God had told us to do? And beloved, we were so shocked when the day of the training came in Pittsburgh to discover that more than 1,000 believers, that's right, more than 1,000 believers had caught the vision and had said, I want to be a part of this history-making event. I want to learn how to heal the sick. I want to be able to get out in that arena and lay hands on the sick. So we trained this slightly more than 1,000 believers. And then we went to the great Pittsburgh Civic Arena on July the 4th, 1985. And some 11,000 people came to watch and to see what God was doing in the 20th century. And after a little uh, praise and worship and a little talking by the two of us, we had the healing teams in a circle around the great floor of the arena. And then we said to the crowd, those of you that need to be healed, come expecting Jesus to do the miracle that you need as believers who have been trained in how to heal the sick, reach out and lay hands upon you. And beloved people said that when you came down from the stands, and you step through that ring of believers, it was exactly the same as walking through the hem of Jesus' garment. It was really hard to walk through there and not get healed. Some of the stories that have come out of this are just fabulous, but I'm thinking in particular of one, and this may, might be somebody just like you. There was an old lady, and as I always say, when I call somebody old, they really have to be old. She'd always wanted to heal the sick but she never had an opportunity to, nor did she ever have an opportunity to learn how to heal the sick. So she saved her money and she came. And when she got there, she was so excited when she was with the other believers. But when she got in the auditorium, fear came in. And she said, oh God, where's there an exit door? Let me out of here. But she couldn't find an exit door. And so she said, God, give me somebody easy. Give me somebody with a cold because then they'll never know if they got healed when I laid hands on them or if they got healed just because a cold gets healed by itself, you know, in seven days. And I think God has a wonderful sense of humor because he put her in the wheelchair section. And as she was standing there in the wheelchair section, her faith just ran right out of her feet. And I'm telling you that just to let you know it might do that to you someday. And so the first wheelchair that was pushed up to her, she said, what's your problem? And he said, rheumatoid arthritis. She said, oh, that's easy. She remembered the teaching that we had given her because it is easy for God, isn't it? It's easy for Jesus to heal any disease. And so she remembered all the training. She said, devil, I bind you by the Spirit of God. Now, and in the name of Jesus, now you foul spirit of rheumatoid arthritis, you come out of there in Jesus' name. And then she, we, she remembered what we said, that you don't minister to somebody until you have you, uh, unless you have them put their faith into action. And so she said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, which is the healing power of God, I give unto you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And this man shot out of that wheelchair like he had been shot out of a gun. And this lady said, oh, you've been able to walk all along. And he said, no, ma'am, I haven't walked in 26 years. He hadn't been out of that wheelchair in 26 years, but he was healed by the touch of a woman who extended the hands of Jesus, believing that the 16th chapter of Mark is true. 
We've had a lot of heating explosions since then. And I pray that you can get the vision of what God is speaking and saying to you. Charles, honey, why don't you give them just a little idea of how you feel about these heating explosions and what can happen to them? Jesus came to earth for one divine purpose, to save the lost. And now he's raising up a body that he's turning his work over to in these last days for that same divine purpose so that as we go out as teams, as we go out as the body of Christ Jesus, then we will duplicate the work of the Master. We will do all the things Jesus did, and he even said greater things for that sole purpose of getting people to believe in Jesus so that we'll go into heaven. We've got five billion people on earth, and we are going to reach them. Peter and James and John did a marvelous job to start this at church age off. We're going to wrap it up in great power in great glory for the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the master and he gave us a master plan. He gave us a, an actual example of us. He planned and trained 70 people, sent them out two by two, and they came back mightily excited because they had done what the master had said, fulfilling his master plan, writing his master plan, and today you and I are a part of his plan to wrap up this age in a mighty way. People, we don't understand it, but for 2,000 years, this great body of believers, one time small, now getting to great hosts of millions that are coming into the kingdom of God, receiving a baptism, and yet we've had this spiritual giant, illiterate spiritually, illiterate as to how to minister the baptism of the Holy Spirit, how to minister healing, how to cast out devils. Only a scattering few came into this dimension. Now God is opening up and Jesus is presenting the body of Christ to the whole world so that they'll see Jesus in you and me. We have that job to come into knowing how to do it. And that's why you've been watching these videotapes, how you've been studying the book and how you've been going out in actual practice performing the works of Jesus. Now Jesus said, the harvest is white but the laborers are few. What was his problem? Few laborers. What's the answer? Multitudes of laborers, and you and I are coming into that dimension, and we're going to make it go. Jesus said, go, make disciples. He didn't mean just go out and win a few people to him. He meant to duplicate ourselves, go in and create new disciples, teach them. So you're a teacher. You're the ones that have to do this now. We're shifting the load out to you so that you can go out and duplicate yourself. Now, the Holy Spirit was sent back by Jesus on the day of Pentecost. And those ordinary people, just like you and me, were endued with the supernatural power. And it's with that power of God that we've learned to dispense that into people's bodies and get them healed again so that they will believe. Jesus did something else on the day of Pentecost. He baptized them with fire, that purifying, purging power of the Spirit of God to raise up a body of believers that are holy, <clears throat> without spot or wrinkle or blemish, a people that don't have bad attitudes, a people that don't have bad habits. Jesus is preparing that bride to go into the glorious rapture up into heaven to meet with Jesus and with the Father up there. You and I are coming into that holiness of God, but we're to create others who are ready to go into the holiness of God, and by the Spirit of God within us, that will happen, the baptism with fire coming up on earth again, and all will be baptized with the, uh, with the Holy Spirit and fire. And then remember that Jesus will be back very soon, we believe, very, very soon to gather up his bride. And can you imagine what that bride is going to be like? You are the bride. Already you're seeing the power of God. Already you felt through your hands. Already you've seen through your hands the power of God flow to create miracles, create parts that are not there, calling into being those things that be not as though they were. And it's happening today, and it's happening through you, and you are one of the parts of the body of Jesus Christ, a significant part of the end-time harvesting evangelisms uh, that's coming out. You are an evangelist of God. When you go to your work, when you go to your marketplace, when you go to play at a ball game or wherever you might be. You are that body. Go make disciples. Prepare the people for what Jesus wants to do. And then what does he say? Those who are faithful to the very end will see God. Let's do it. We are the end time disciples. We're going to wrap this age up and then we're going to look up in that eastern sky and say, Master, that's you. You've come back for the bride. Hallelujah.
<laughs> Hallelujah, Charles. Isn't that exciting? Isn't that exciting to know that if you and I can do it, they can do it too.